<clears throat> hey everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's good. Look, this is uh, another installment in how the games are played or, uh, you know, you can word it, the need for blacks to understand how things work. Before I get started, a reminder on the importance of supporting the work we do right now. We're having a targeted fundraiser uh, for our flagship program, which is Black Men Lead, a rite of passage initiative for young black males. And let me tell you something, right now we're catching hell just here in Houston. And I'm getting a lot of phone calls from all over the country, uh, Chi-Town, Wilmington, Charlotte, Atlanta, several cities in Florida, Dallas, Los Angeles, um, where crazy, crazy things are happening. We've had a problem with uh, fratricide or blacks killing blacks for a while. I mean, and I'm not one person to subscribe to the notion of black on black crime uh, until we are able to talk about white on white crime, Asian on Asian crime and on and on as long as it, it is presented as an exclusive phenomenon and does not examine the influence of proximity i will never use that term doesn't mean that we aren't killing each other it just means that that term was created to make the violence in the black community be perceived as something that's inherent to black people and it doesn't apply to others the truth of the matter is 84 percent of white people are murdered by other white people. So we need to keep that in mind. Uh, domestic violence is extremely high in white holes, households, especially those in the military and uh, those who have men in the military and the police force. So just something uh, to look at as far as that. But um, here in Houston, man, we've had several situations. A little over a week, a week ago, 11 year old comes on with his parents forgets his coat and the car goes back out to get the coat shot dead um yesterday two things happened within literally a couple of blocks of each other first a 13 year old kid is with some friends somebody rides up shoots off in the car shoots him three times uh last i checked he was expected to, to survive uh, uh like i said flew a few blocks over uh, somebody shoots into the car of a young a family uh, which had a young nine-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy and it hit the nine-year-old girl in the head last I heard she was in critical condition in surgery and this is an ongoing narrative and we've talked about this we can sit up and we can whine and we can play and we can we can expect them to fix it and they have it or we can sit up and understand that that we need to get it before it gets to this point there's a reason these children are out there going in like they're going in and sitting up and going, oh my God, shaking my head. Uh, it's a damn shame and all the other stuff we can say without being willing to be a part of the solution is absolutely not gonna get it done. We are going to have to be a part of the solution. I've told you over and over again, the most influential way to impact African-American, adolescent, and young adult male violence is proper socialization. Socialization is the proper development and integration into a social culture in which the individual becomes pro-social in a way that benefits him and others that he is connected to. And we need to do that. The Jews have a rite of passage. Latinos have a right of passage. Arabs have a right of passage. We have no universal right of passage here in the U.S. We, we are leaving a bunch of boys who have been in some way without their fathers to find their way. And we are leaving fathers who may not understand the totality of development and how to socialize. Uh, we, we're leaving them hanging on being able to help their sons become socialized. I'm getting parents even in two parent households that are struggling with on how to get their boys online. And I've sit up and I presented the program over and over again, can't get any traction behind it. All the work I've done in this program in over a decade has been primarily by a few people like Dr. Blanchard, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
Dwayne Smalls has been uh, a strong su su uh, supporter. Uh, for a straight year, Erlene Be Beeman donated $50 per year and a couple of other people. But the, imagine this on a national level. Imagine this on a local level and how many boys are in Houston. Uh, and we're talking millions. And how many are in the inner city? We're talking hundreds of thousands. And no rite of passage you know, uh, program on any grand scale and I'm sitting up and I'm saying hey look we need your support didn't mean to even go in that long on that but I'm just sitting up and I'm looking and I'll get this across my desk I don't know if anybody can really understand the gravity emotional gravity of caring about something and then seeing it just constantly pushed in your face you know if every now and then I got a phone call you know and this type of violence was you know, an, an abstract, arbitrary type thing. It's becoming the norm. It's a part of the culture. And that's absolutely unacceptable, especially when you've got a number of people who've put in the work to develop scientifically proven methods to go out and make a difference. And it's just easier to sit up and type OMG than to actually invest in it and become a part of the solution. Not only in investing in it financially, but in investing in it as being a part of creating the connectivity that allows the program to grow. You know, I say all that, and I, you know, again, I'm asking for support. Now, moving on to what I actually got on here to talk about. I don't know, wasted time talking about that. Well, it's not wasted. It's what I believe in. It's what I'm fighting for. But I got on to talk to you about this whole Joe Rogan thing. I got on, I told you, one of the reasons we always in last place is because we don't understand how things work. We are normally, the game is being played and we are normally the pawns. And so we get played, but we don't benefit from being in the game. Okay, you know, there's never a chance that we actually are going to win anything except that we are going to be the primary leverage used in so many different ways. We are easily triggered emotionally, and so they know exactly what to trigger. It's like actually having someone hypnotized and 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 the and the uh, trigger word to get them to do a specific thing is racism or an implied statement that somebody is racist or practicing racism. You know, hey, like he said the N-word. Oh yeah, he's gotta be racist. We're rising up and we're fighting the cause and not understanding that you're being played. And I told you when we talked about this the other day that Joe Rogan's going to win big time one way or another because he's already got an offer from Rumble, a four-year deal for $100 million. plus he gets to keep all his content and all the revenue it generates and sponsorships. Major deal for him if he goes over there. Major deal if he stays because he wouldn't be offered that if he's not already making that um, uh, for Spotify. The run reason that Spotify hadn't taken him down despite all the negative publicity is he's making them way too much money. They're letting people go because you leaving ain't matching up to what we getting. And that lets you know that it has absolutely, none, none of this has absolutely anything to do with morality. We're the only one fighting the moral battle in this. Everybody else is getting paper and getting paid. And the reason I'm bringing this back up is because one of the main reasons that a bunch of black people say they were getting on board is because of this uh, uniquely presented uh, video by NDRE and please don't get me wrong I am a, a, a definitely a definite appreciation of the gift that NDRE has and the beauty of this beautiful black sister and this is the first time I've ever seen her outside of that scope speak on anything and take a stance that I have to say was political and I don't agree with how it was done I'm, I, I, I'm big. Take your stand. If you don't believe something is right, take your stand. But here's the first problem with what Indiari did. She came out. She said that she's felt this way for a long time. And it was after 
Neil Young and some other people decided they were going to jump ship on that Spotify and make a stand that she decided that it was time for her to make a move. So what you needed was uh, something that you're so uh, passionate about is for someone outside the collective to give you permission by doing it first. That's the first thing that I jumped on and, and I looked at. And so the re and then, but th that's not the big thing. Uh, Tony Lindsay, fil filmmaker Tony Lindsay, and I, uh, who I've developed a relationship with, who we've we've had some. Uh, he's interviewed me. He started out with him in interviewing me uh, for a short piece that he did with uh, me and Dr. Cleo uh, Monago, and then we did a couple things. Then we had him on the show, on the the teacher show this past week, and we 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 kicked for a minute and talk some good stuff uh but we we can we, we communicate a lot so we 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 talked and one thing that uh we talked about was how everybody is going to use this and manipulate this and massage this to find their space and thing you have to understand that while ndire is a system She's also an artist, a celebrity, a person who makes money off the public. And she positioned herself in that narrative to give herself relevance. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some way she's positioned herself. Maybe she's positioned herself for the dropping of a new single or a new album. Maybe she's positioning herself to be a voice or a platform for a certain group or organization or maybe even political party. But I know that it will start out. Here's the thing, though. And the reason I'm even sitting here after that statement, she issues another statement, I believe yesterday or t early, early today, that she now does not believe that Joe Rogan is racist. You can't tell me that there's not an influential, in, or, in, that there's not an influential entity in the background pulling their strings. You, sh you felt strongly or not enough about what he did to say you were going to pull your music and your content from Spotify. And yet, you're now coming back and saying that you don't believe he's racist. And I'm pretty sure there's some type of explanation uh, as to her change in uh, perception on the thing and whatever, and it's going to be, you know, uh, critically sculpted uh, to present a reasonable or rational idea behind it but at the end of the day it's about positioning it's about taking a situation and using it to your benefit the only thing you're going to have Joe Rogan Spotify, Rumble India Ari, Neil um, uh, the first guy to leave, Neil whatever his name I can't, Neil Young you're going to have him and all the other people who put their names out there to get some traction on this. What you got to understand is this didn't start as Joe Rogan, uh, the racist. This started out as Joe Rogan. Let's get rid of Joe Rogan for misinformation. He was pandering misinformation that we're finding out wasn't actually misinformation, first and foremost. But uh, he got someone on there that started to shed some light on some things that has been a constant narrative of a certain group that certain group are power brokers and play hardball in the political realm and it was going to make them look real bad and it's not a whole lot of refuting so the only option they got is to attack the messenger so the discrediting campaign started and that's what it was from the beginning was a discrediting campaign it had anything to do about moral standing didn't have anything to do about um, you know him being racist what happened was it wasn't getting any traction nobody was trying to hear it you know there was a few people talking about it but it wasn't gaining enough traction because what's happening is the whole misinformation uh, campaign strategy doesn't have the weight it had because people are starting to wake up and find out a lot of stuff they've been told actually isn't true and that some of the people who are hollering misinformation are actually the people who are giving misinformation. So it didn't take traction. So what they did, they went and dug up some stuff where Joe Rogan said some things he shouldn't have said. And like I told you from Jump Street, I'm not a fan of dude for a lot of different reasons. 
but I, I don't have energy for dude either. I'm not going out trying to go after dude unless he comes after me or comes after my people. Uh, to me, using the N word is not enough for me to go out there. They using that every day all over the place. And if I'm gonna chase that down, I'm gonna spend my whole life going after something that does not have traction. I'd rather be focused on the policies that are in place that hurt my people every day. I'd rather focus on the cultural practices that are in play every day that hurt my people. I'd rather focus on things that if we change them, it changes our situation Ac uh, academically, uh, financially, economically, uh, in, in, in social fluidity, in, in, in the ways that are matter that increase the chance of our children living a better life than we ever imagined. Those are the things that I would rather focus on. So him sitting up using the N-word, I got to come with a whole lot more than that before I get on board of going after the person. It ain't got nothing to do with me supporting him. I don't support him. I don't watch his stuff. Now, if somebody brings something to me and say, hey, man, check out what happened, and I look at it and I'll give an opinion. Uh, I've seen some of his stuff, but I'm not subscribed to anything, and I don't watch it on a regular basis. I can't tell you the last time I watched a Joe Rogan anything. But I know that there are times that people have sent them to me and say, hey, man, check out what Joe Rogan said. And the times he sent them to me, the shit he was talking about, excuse me, was was on point. Uh, but again, because I don't see where he is a direct. Not, Tony Tony and I kind of uh, didn't quite agree head to head on whether he's an ally or not. He's definitely not a friend of the black people. But could he be considered an ally? I mean, indirectly, maybe not directly and the only reason i say indirectly is a point that tony made tony said that because the people who are most predominantly impacted by this misinformation concerning this you know what uh that's been going on for the last two years are people who look like us we are the most un you know what gotta watch it when you're putting it on youtube uh we, we, we're the ones that are targeted the most because we're the ones most resistant outside of PhDs. PhDs, by percentage-wise of the uh, demographic, ain't feeling it. But, you know, as far as racial groups, we're definitely the most... Uh, we ain't... No, nah, no, nah, we ain't doing that. And so we're the most targeted. All the ads are aimed at us. All of the politicians are mobilizing and trying to get us on board with it. So by... Uh, sitting up and putting out uh, the truth about what's going on, uh, those who are able to accept the truth and move will benefit from it, and it would be us, predominantly. But but that's not because that's what Joe Rogan set out to do. I think he's just out there pointing out BS because that's how he gets down, and that's what makes him who he is. And it just so happens that the BS he's pointing out now negatively impacts us as a group. And so... It's not, and it's not exclusively us. So in that sense, to me, he's not an ally because his mo motives aren't intentionally aimed at helping us. Uh, we just happen to be uh, collateral benefit beneficiaries. And, you know, with that being said, um, I think that we have definitely got to do a better job of understanding how things work. We've got to do a better job of knowing when to invest ourselves and interject ourselves into things. We've got to do a better job of focusing on the policies and laws that are destroying us and the cultural uh, paradigms and behaviors that we practice that are weakening us. These are the things that we need to focus on. These are the things that can make a difference. Be, making sure our children are really holistically educated, like Dr. Amos Wilson, like Dr. Uh, Naeem Markbar, and like I have advocated for in several of my books and in my work. Uh, I think that's important. I think it's important to properly socialize young black boys and young black girls. I think it's important to deal with poverty at a core level and stop trying to put Band-Aids on these massive gaping wounds. I think that's where the focus needs to be, not on trying to deal with some dude because he used the N-word. Uh, so, I mean, it should be a natural instinctive thing. It shouldn't be something you have to look at. If somebody's doing something that is offending you or your people, you simply say, look, I'm not messing with them. If there's no benefit of going after them, you know. Now, now here's the thing. 
for me, you know, I can say it's a benefit as an individual going after. I have platforms for which I can go after them and generate interest and get revenue. And then I can take that revenue and invest back in my people. But mobilizing my people to do it, like getting on here and saying, man, we need to go, you, you, you're not gonna get me to say it because it's not gonna benefit everybody the same. It'll benefit me and I'll give my opinion. But to me, even sitting on here talking for 30 or 40 minutes about a dude saying the N word and talking about how horrible it is and how, how devastating it is and how hurtful it is, that's a bunch of BS. Man, he's who he is, it ain't hurt me. You know, I had to grow up from letting what somebody said, and I mean anybody say it, says, negatively impact me to a level that is breaking me from where I can't do what I'm supposed to be doing to be better. So words, you gotta come with a whole lot more than he used the N-word. And so I said all of that to close out with this. What are we going to focus on? It's that simple. Tell me what we're going to focus on. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, take care. And we'll talk soon. Don't forget, support what we're doing. Because it is immediate. It's an immediate impact in the community. Something that we need to deal with immediately and forcefully. Our children are literally killing each other and destroying any hope of us rising up and doing what we need to do. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace.